Hi and welcome back to Podcast School. This is another A2 Technology and Design video podcast. Today we're going to complete our look at the decimal counter. This is part two of the two part series. Now the overview is very short as you can see. All we're going to do today is see how we can modify the counter from the last podcast that was an up counter into a down counter. Now I've just said here that it's easy to modify the standard ripple counter we created earlier. All right, indeed, this is all that we need to do. This, uh, this, this, as you see in the circuit diagram here. So what we have is we have the JK flip flops as before. Remember, a JK flip flop is just, uh, or sorry, a T type flip flop is just a JK flip flop with its J and K inputs tied together, and we rarely add those in uh, when we're drawing these diagrams. So just remember that those are those are present, but we're not we're not writing them in here for convenience. So what we have is, we have our T-type flip-flops cascaded as before, but the difference is we're actually clocking the next T-type flip-flop from Q bar and not from Q. Again, the third one is clocked from the second uh, T-type flip-flop Q bar and not from Q. Okay, now let me just put down some text. I've said, and you know already, that these T-type flip-flops change on a falling edge of the clock input, on a falling edge. So therefore, it's easy to figure out that if they're going to change on a falling edge, in fact, the uh, Q will be a rising edge when the next T-type uh, changes because of the Q bar being a complement. Okay, in other words, when Q bar is falling, Q is rising. All right. Now, the easiest way to see this and to figure this out is not to look at this diagram, but to look at a timing diagram. So that's what you're going to see next. Okay, so here is the timing diagram. I just put it in straight away just so you can see it. Okay, now, the clock as before along the top. Next row we have our A signal. And if you look just directly underneath the A, we've got Q bar A, or what I've called Q bar A. And that's just the complement of A. So when A is high, Q bar A is low, and vice versa. All right? Now, we are, remember, clocking the second T-type flip-flop with Q bar A. So we're expecting to see a change in B when there is a falling edge in Q bar A. And indeed that is true because you can see that there's a falling or a changing in B and its complement as Q bar A falls. Again, we can see that here and here. And indeed, if you carry that theory through, then you should see a fall or changing in C and Q bar C when Q bar B is falling. And indeed, you can see that here. So in other words, we have a changing state whenever the complement uh, signal falls or there's a, a falling edge. Okay, So we're still taking our uh, values from the A, B, C and D columns, but we're clocking from Q bar A, Q bar C, sorry, Q bar B and Q bar C, and we're not needing to, to clock anything from Q bar uh, D because this is only a 4-bit counter and we already have our three uh, carryovers or our signals if you like that we need to do that. Okay, so let's run this yellow bar through. At the moment you can see A, B, C and D are all high so that gives us 15. Remember A is our least significant bit and D is our most significant bit. So D has a value of 8, C has a value of 4, B has a value of 2 and A has a value of 1 summing to 15. Okay, so when we uh, scrub this forward to our next value, we can see that A has gone low, so we're losing one from our 15 value, so we left with 14. Okay, this time our A value comes back, but we've lost the two value. So in other words, it's eight, four, and one, which gives us 13, and so forth, and so on. So in this case, we're counting down from 15 through to 8. And if I continued this timing diagram on, you would see that it would go the whole way to 0. So we have created a down 
counter. Okay, very easy. Now, as always, if you want to review this podcast, just rewind. There's no need for me to to repeat anything here. Okay then, until next time, bye-bye.